If you're in cybersecurity and want to hit above that six figure mark in 2026, these are the skills that you need to learn. So even with the current job market, cybersecurity job demand is still growing three times faster than other IT jobs, but not every skill will pay the same. Factors like the rise of generative AI, government regulations, and even advancements in cloud security are the main things that are reshaping which cybersecurity skills are actually valuable to employers. Okay, so with that, these are the six skills that you should be learning. Number one on this list is GRC or governance risk and compliance. Now this goes without saying, but given how quickly AI has advanced in the past few years, there's so many different regulations that need to come out out of this, especially around privacy and compliance, considering how much data is being used to test these AI models. And that is another reason why GRC professionals are in such high demand right now, because so many companies are going through their ISO audits, their SOC 2, HIPAA, PCI, and all this is affected by AI. Not to mention semi-recent updates to the NIST framework, which is commonly used to test cybersecurity programs across different organizations, whether you're at a small startup or a government agency. And another reason why you'll see a lot more compliance jobs, as well as for risk and IT auditing. Another reason for this is the fact that there's just been a boom of new companies that are appearing because of AI with non-technical founders taking advantage of the new tech landscape and being able to build something really quickly from scratch with just an idea. And with all these new companies, if they want to get the big customers like tech companies, finance companies, government agencies, then they're going to have to pass certain security audits and get certain security certifications for them to be able to attract different customers. A security certification, like for example, the ISO 27001, basically tells potential customers and clients that, hey, we've gone through ISO 27001 and an auditor came in and tested our security program against the list of requirements as part of the audit. And that is why you should trust us with your data, with your clients, with your employees. And you'll likely also see a lot more GRC consulting agencies that are going to be popping up to help fill this need. Skill number two on this list is threat intelligence. This is specifically because of the fact that cybersecurity is really moving from reactive to defense to proactive defense. And a lot of that ties back to how good your threat intelligence team is. Companies are realizing this and they're investing a lot of money into skills like threat hunting, OSINT or open source intelligence, malware analysis, and APT tracking. Especially if you're looking to work for a bigger company like FinTech or any of the big banks, or of course government agencies, these are the organizations that are going to have really big threat intelligence teams that could literally be thousands of people tracking different APTs, tracking different nation states, as well as of course just different threat actors across the board that may be impacting their industry. Not to mention that you can combine threat intelligence with automation, think scripting languages like Python, the MITRE attack framework, and a combination of this will make you really competitive in the job market. Number three on this list is cloud security. This one hopefully doesn't come as a surprise to anyone, but given how expensive it is to maintain a data center, most companies are moving towards public cloud infrastructures or hybrid cloud. And that is because A, it is just a lot cheaper to manage. B, a lot of the cloud environments already come pre-built with security configurations and, and there's no heavy setup that's needed from an organization that maybe has a smaller cybersecurity or IT team. This includes skills like AWS, Azure, Google Cloud Platform, identity and access management, container and serverless security, and of course getting specific cloud certifications for each of the individual cloud providers, depending on which one that you're most familiar with, is really going to help boost your negotiations when it comes to applying for that next job. My advice for anyone who is interested in going into cloud security is the fact that a lot of these cloud platforms already give you free learning credits or student accounts that you can use to basically build something from scratch and secure it yourself. That is a project that I personally recommend and also looks really good on your resume if you're looking for technical skills to get on there. For example, going to AWS and basically spinning up your own cloud environment using the credits that they give you to be able to set up all the security configurations, to host your own server, your own database, spin up your own web application, these are all really good skills to have and of course a really good project that you can talk about in future interviews because it's something that you would definitely already be doing on the job if you're working as a security analyst, a cloud security specialist, or even a security engineer. And if you are someone who is interested in breaking into cybersecurity, another route I also recommend for beginners is to first start your career in IT and then pivot into cybersecurity just because of the fact that there are so many more entry-level IT jobs compared to entry-level cybersecurity jobs. The course I recommend for this is Josh Matacor's IT course, and I've done interviews with his students. I'll link one down in my description where someone with zero technical IT cybersecurity experience was able to get a job within basically a month of completing this course. So I highly recommend checking that out. IT is one of the biggest areas in tech that overlap in cybersecurity in terms of skills, in terms of tooling. If you've been trying to break into cybersecurity and haven't had as much luck getting an entry-level job, consider starting out in IT first and then pivoting your way into cyber. I also have a discount code for the IT course, also linked below, and I believe there's also a free intro to IT course 
that you can take as part of the full certification program. Skill number four on this list is, of course, AI security. So given the state that we're in right now, AI is basically both the threat and the defense. I'm sure you guys have seen the news about Asian states and APTs using AI to hack into different organizations, and a lot of the organizations also using AI to defend against those AI attacks. So this is basically where the future of cybersecurity and defense as a whole is going. And that is another reason why there is just so much demand for the skills that are needed to protect against different AI attacks. These skills include prompt injection defense, LLM data sanitization, model security and governance. Again, this also goes back to GRC because for example, what kind of data are you feeding into these models and how are companies ensuring that there's no private or sensitive data that is being fed to be able to comply against certain regulations or standards that are required of them based on the security certifications that they already have. Now, of course, because it's such a new field, just in the past few years. A lot of this is still gray area and, and that is another reason why this area is very exciting right now. If you're someone who is potentially switching jobs in cybersecurity and are looking for an interesting area to go into that maybe requires a new skill set and you're interested in something technical, then this is the area that I highly recommend if you already have experience in other niches of cybersecurity. And as a bonus, if you combine your skills for securing LLMs along with GRC and auditing, that is basically one of the perfect combinations of becoming highly employable in the next few years. All right, last but not least on this list, number five is application security. So you guys have may already seen the articles about how an AI hacker is basically the number one hacker in the US. This was, I believe, over the summer. And basically what happened was that Expo or Crossbow is an AI bot that was created by red teamers to basically find vulnerabilities and bugs in different applications. But the fine line is the fact that all the vulnerabilities that it found still had to be reviewed and approved and of course confirmed by a human pen tester. Right now, AI hackers, AI red teamers, AI pen testers are only as good as what they can replicate. Personally, in my opinion, red teamers are going to be the hardest to replace in terms of AI. And that is because you need the technical skill set, the creativity, the background knowledge of different tools, different security vulnerabilities. And with all that combined, AI hackers are just not there yet. And I personally think it will take the longest to get there compared to which you may have already heard of different AI tools and bots replacing SOC analysts or blue teamers because a lot of the work on the blue team side is really log analysis, reviewing a lot of data, cross-examining from different sources, creating tickets, and a lot of these things can be automated by AI and likely already is. So if you're a cybersecurity professional, personally, I think two of the really good niches that you should go into if you're interested in hands-on security are red team or purple team. Currently, blue team, I think, is being hit the hardest by AI and different advancements, just given the nature of the job. But again, it's going to be really hard to replace a good red teamer. And of course, having skills like secure SDLC, using different SAS and DAS tools and code scanners, and another niche one, which is API security. These are three really great things to focus on if you're interested in red teaming. And of course, even with all these niches, one of the number one things I recommend to anyone who is trying to increase their salary in cybersecurity is to, of course, to negotiate your salary. Even if you think there's no room for negotiations, I personally still think that it never hurts to ask. And just getting a five, $10,000 bonus can make a huge impact throughout a 40, 45 year career when it comes to your overall salary growth and projection as you go into more senior roles. All right, so that is it for this video. Let me know your thoughts on this in the comments below. Are any of these skills to learn on your list? Or if there are any additional ones that you'd like to add, feel free to drop them. If this video was helpful, please like and subscribe as it really does help out the channel. Let me know if there are any other video topics you'd like to see from me in the future. And don't forget to also stay connected on LinkedIn, Discord, Instagram, all linked in my description. And hopefully I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.